Hello everyone. Welcome to EduTaps, another insightful session of Perspective 360 degree, where we do current affair based answer writing practice in a detailed and structured manner. So if you are an aspirant preparing for exams like RBI, NABARD, etc., then this initiative is definitely going to help you with answer writing practice for the descriptive paper of phase 2. So let us begin with the discussion and the topic that we are going to cover today is Pradhan Mantri Matsya Kisan Samriddhi Sahayojana and it was there in the news and we are going to cover different aspects related to it including its objectives, the functioning and the significance etc. So let us also see how, how this is relevant as far as the exam is concerned. So in the RBI Nabard grade A syllabus, the fishery sector has been mentioned very precisely. So you can see that this topic is important as far as the Nabard exam is concerned. Now, if you are somebody who is new to this Perspective 360 degree series, then let me tell you that here. Firstly, we give you an expected question and we are going to discuss this expected question as a part of this session. Now, once this session is done, you have to write the answer of the expected question in the comment box that will be evaluated by our team within 48 hours. That is, you have to submit this answer before Wednesday 5 p.m. I hope it is clear and let me also add that this whole initiative is free of cost. I hope this is clear to you. Now let us see the expected question for today which is how does the Pradhan Mantri Matsya Kisan Samriddhi Sahai Yojana contribute to the enhancement of the blue economy in India. Now you would be knowing that the first step before writing the answer is to identify the keywords that are mentioned in the question. So the first keyword is MKSSY. The second keyword is how does it contribute? So it means the question is asking about the significance of the scheme. But sig significance with respect to what? Significance respect with respect to the blue economy in India. So the third is, third keyword is the blue economy of India. Now let us also go through the answer blueprint. This is the blueprint that I would like you, I would like you to follow when you are answering this question in the comment box and also in your exam. Now while you are writing your answer, you have to divide your answer into introduction, the body, and the conclusion. The introduction should be around 10 to 12 percent of the total word limit. The same case applies to conclusion also and the rest of the word limit should be allocated to the body part which has to be written in the form of different headings and subheadings. So this, these are the headings under it there will be different subheadings and under the subheadings you will write your relevant points and then you have to substantiate these relevant points on the basis of data, facts and examples. I hope this is clear to you. Now let us move on to the next slide which is regarding uh, the introduction of the question. So before jumping directly to the introduction, let us first understand the idea behind what is blue economy and how this scheme of Pradhan Mantri Matse Kisan Sampriti Sahai Yojana, how this scheme is contributing to the blue economy, we are going to understand it. So firstly, we are going to see what do we understand by blue economy and what is the importance of the fishery sector and why India is focusing so much on this fishery sector. So, the first thing that you need to know is that India has second rank as far as the aquaculture production is concerned. Then India has third rank for the production of fish and fisheries. Next is India is the fourth largest exporter 
of fishes. Apart from that, you can also remember one more data which is related to the length of India's coastline so that you can write the significance of this whole objective of the blue economy. Why government is targeting it so much because we have a big coastline and a big pot huge potential to boost our economy. So length of India's coastline which you can google. So these are the po basic points that show that India is one of the largest exporter, one of the largest producer as far as the fisheries are concerned. So that gives India enough reason to make such relevant schemes so that they can do better targeting in this whole sector. So now let us understand what is blue economy. So blue economy means the sustainable use of resources, the sustainable use of ocean resources for the economic benefits. So if you see the idea of blue, blue economy, it involves the sustainable use of ocean resources for the economic benefits. Now this blue economy principle, these, it has certain aspects, different dimensions. So when we talk about the different principles of blue economy, what does blue economy include? So it includes the principles such as sustainability, which means to use resources in such a manner that you are using it in an optimized manner for the present generation and saving them for the future generations also. So this is nothing but sustainability and which is one of the core principles of the blue economy. That is without damaging the environment, we are uh, utilizing the resources of the ocean. The second is innovation and technology. So innovation and technology can play a very important role to reduce the cost of the extraction of resources and what it will do, it will also boost our productivity and efficiency. So that is an important principle. The third is the diversification. So the diversification means the diversification of resources so that we can do better application of the resources by implementing them in, them in different sectors such as marine biotechnology, then ecotourism, for the renewable energy resources, etc. So this is also one of the important principles, which is nothing but diversification. Another principle is the fourth one, which is collaboration and governance. Now this principle includes the, that promotes the cooperation between different stakeholders of the government, the stakeholders such as the government itself, then the different communities who are dependent on the fisheries sector, then there are different MSMEs, the self-help groups, then fish workers, fish vendors, all those people, then the fish farmers also, it is also an important category. So all these stakeholders should collab and should promote more so that more inclusivity or social inclusivity can be promoted and the objectives of the blue economy idea can be fulfilled. And let me also tell you that, let me change the ink. So let me also tell you that this fourth principle, this fourth principle is the main idea behind the implementation of this scheme, which is Pradhan Mantri Matsya Kisan Samriddhi Sahai Yojana. So this fourth principle is the reason why this scheme has been implemented. Now let us move on to the scheme. And let us see how this fourth principle of blue economy is connected to this scheme. Let us see. Now, first let us open the slide and let us read the introduction. What introduction we can write for this answer? We had analyzed the keywords. So let us see what is the definition of this scheme. We will start from the definition. So the PMMKSSY is a central sector sub scheme. Central sector sub scheme. Okay. Under the Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sampada So Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sampada for formalization of the fishery sector. Now here I want to explain you two things. The first thing is why we are saying that it is a center sector scheme 
and what is central sector scheme and why we are calling it a central sector sub scheme that is the first thing that i will explain secondly i will explain what do we mean by this formalization that we are writing which is the most important objective as far as this scheme is concerned so if we go back to the white screen and just rub it now you must have heard about this scheme it was also asked in the previous year questions of nabard so you must have heard this scheme pradhan mantri matsya sampada yojana which is nothing but an umbrella scheme related to fishery sector under this scheme there are two components the first is the central sector component and the second is the central sponsored component now what is the difference the difference is that what do uh, first let me change this ink yes now what do we mean by central sector and the central sponsored central sector means whatever whatever funds that have been allocated to this part of the scheme these funds have to be allocated only by the central government so only by the central government central government government is the primary and the only source of this uh, scheme though there could be private mechanism also but the point is that the state government will not be a part of it there can be private mechanisms such as the private companies there can be world bank also by the way i want to tell you that world bank is also a sponsor of this scheme so world bank can be a part of it or any other private entity but the state government is not going to be the part the next is the central sponsored which means where both the center and the state government they contribute the funding of the scheme i hope this is clear to you now when we talk about this component which is the central sector component of the pradhan mantri matsya sampada yojana under this component what we have we have our scheme which is pradhan mantri matsya kisan samriddhi sahay yojana i hope i have written it correctly the name is a bit lengthy so under this category this scheme falls and that's why in the definition we had written that pradhan mantri mksy is nothing but it is a central sector sub scheme why sub because it is falling under this category i hope this is clear now the next point is formalization which i said that which is very much directly directly linked to the fourth principle or the fourth aspect that we had discussed previously which is collaboration in gov uh, governance so why formalization as we know that when we talk about the fisheries sector then there are different stakeholders stakeholders such as i have already said the farm vendors fish vendors the fish workers fish farmers fpos shgs then government also is a stakeholder msmes etc so these are the different stakeholders there are other stakeholders also but i meant to mention the important ones so the pro one of the problems with this fishery sector is that the stakeholders under this sec sector they are a bit unorganized it means they are not formally linked under a certain integrated system just like the other sectors so that is one of the important problem which is the lack of formalization in this sector because why formalization is important because if the government wants to implement any type of policy such as sending the grants or the subsidies or the incentives to the fish farmers so such a task becomes tedious if the whole sector is unorganized the different stakeholders are not linked to each other so that becomes problematic so in order to solve that problem what government is doing through this scheme they are bringing the formalization of the fishery sector how they are bringing the formalization we are going to see in the next slide but but for now it these are the basics of the scheme that it is a central sector sector sub scheme under the pradhan mantri uh, matsya sampada yojana 
uh, for formalization of the fishery sector. I hope this is clear to you. Now the next is of course it falls under the Ministry of Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Dairying. The third point is the objectives. Since the objectives are not directly asked in the question but just to give an overview and also to fulfill the word limit criteria, what we are doing? We are writing objectives but in a very short manner, just single lines, no explanation at all because the question is not directly asking about it. So the first objective is gradual formalization which we have already seen. The second is facilitating institutional finance to fishery sector MSMEs. So that was the important purpose of formalization. So if the first, pro uh, first step is complete, then will, it will automatically help in this facilitation. That is to send the finance to these institutions or the MSMEs because the formalization will take place and the government will know who a certain person is and how can they approach that person and whether the benefits of the incentives or the grants are reaching that person or not. So that is the overall objective. The third is pro pro providing a one-time incentive to beneficiaries for purchasing aquaculture insurance. So if the beneficiaries will purchase the aquaculture insurance, what the government will give them, the government is going to provide them one-time incentive. So this incentive is going to be one-time, which makes it different from the subsidies. For example, if you see the MSP, how do we see MSP? MSP has no deadline. So government has to give MSP every season and uh, they have to spend a lot of expenditure regarding that. But these, uh, these incentives are one-time incentives. It means if the beneficiaries are purchasing the aquaculture insurance, this insurance is going to help them in long run. And in order to avail them long-term benefits, in order to encourage them to take this insurance, what government is doing, it is giving them one-time in incentive so that the farmers or the other uh, beneficiaries, what they will do, they put more efforts to get these insurance and that is the main idea behind it. So one-time incentive, which is an important component of this scheme. We are going to understand in a detailed manner also. And the last is the connecting line, the line which connects our body and the introduction. So India is among the top five fish exporting nations and uh, this is the data that we have already discussed. And this scheme aims to play crucial role in the development of the blue economy. Now since the question was asking about the significance of this scheme, so what we are uh, writing the last line, the crucial role. Role means significance and once we will write this line, after that what we will do, suppose this is your introduction. And this is your last line. After this, what will you do? You will write the body. Here comes your body. What is your body? The significance. And what was the last of your uh, last line of your introduction? Relative significance. So what does it show? That there is a certain logical flow in your answer. These are very minor things that I am telling you that we certainly, you know, often ignore. So these are very small things that there should be a logical flow in your answer in order to as a part of your answer writing practice. So this is an example how you can make a logical flow and that is the main idea. I hope the introduction is clear to you. Now let us see the implementation strategy of this scheme. You don't have to write it in the answer. I have written it just for the explanation so that you get a better detail about the scheme. This you have you don't don't write it in your answer please. Otherwise you will cross the word limit. So the first component is formalization of fisheries sector and facilitating access to fisheries micro enterprises to government of India programs for the financing of working capital. Now, as we already talked about the formalization of the fisheries, now how this formalization is being done? What platform is being created under which all the stakeholders will be connected to each other and the government is going to implement its programs effectively? That platform is establishment of national fisheries digital platform which will be created and all the stakeholders will be mobilized to register on it. So all the stake stakeholders will register on this one platform where government can keep an eye, monitor and implement the schemes effectively. The national fishery digital platform will serve multiple functions including disbursement of financial incentives etc. So one of the important function of this uh, online portal or the platform is to ease the uh, disbursement of finance or the in incentives. The component 1B is 
facilitating the adoption of aquaculture insurance it is proposed to facilitate the creation of appropriate insurance products and to cover at least 1 lakh hectares of aquaculture farms so this is regarding the insurance as we have already talked about the one time incentive that will be given for the insurance that was just one factor they are also government is also giving incentives regarding the maintaining the quality of the fishery product then regarding the supply chains all those things are covered so the government is the main idea is that the government is giving incentives one time incentives for different things so again uh, the second component is supporting micro enterprises to improve fishery sector fishery sector value chain efficiencies this is simple the third is facilitating adoption and expansion of fish and fishery product safety and quality insurance system so the government is also making sure that there is safety regarding the products of the fishes and there is a, a proper quality assurance system so that is also an important component the last component is project management monitoring and reporting so that there is more accountability as far as this whole financial mechanism or the implementation of scheme is concerned so there is a proper project management system also where the government will implement monitor and evaluate the project activities how far has the project have been implemented successfully so that they are able to keep a better record of the things i hope this is clear now let us move on to the body part which is nothing but the significance the question is asking about the contribution to the blue economy so we are going to see uh, with respect to that the first significance is formalization of the fishery sector of course we have discussed that i have told you in a detailed manner that how this formalization is to is going to help it is going to help by uh, connecting the different stakeholders you can write this data that the that it aims to support 6.4 lakh micro enterprises and 5500 fisheries cooperatives and it it will lead to access to institutional credit we have discussed uh, everything the only thing is the data i have taken it from the uh, government's pib notification only so this is the official data of government so we have used it in the significance part the second point is national fisheries digital platform so once this platform will be created so all the small and micro enterprises uh, of the fisheries se sector they 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 can be identified and the benefits of the different government schemes can be facilitated to them so this is the main idea behind the national fisheries digital platform significance that is it enables a proper coordination between the different stakeholders the third point is regarding improving value chain efficiency so value chain is nothing but when the different stakeholders are involved such as let's say the fish farmer or the worker what they will do they will catch the fish from the pond then they will send it to stakeholder number 2 who, who will do what he will let's say do food processing of this uh, fisheries then what it will do it will send it to third stakeholders who will do the marketing of this fisheries so what uh, every stakeholders is doing every stakeholders is adding some sort of value in the supply chain and this is what it means it means that all the stakeholders when they all the stakeholders will be connected under one umbrella then what it will do it will improve the value chain efficiency so it focuses on enhancing value chain efficiencies and ensuring the production of safe high quality fish products we have written data also that it it intends to support around 5500 targeted micro and small enterprise by promoting them with financial uh, technical assistance so they are going to give them better uh, accessibility of technology and finance in order to improve the value chains i hope it is clear the next is the job creation this point is very easy i don't even need to explain it how it will lead to job creation because when the whole sector will improve improve what it will lead to it will lead to creation of or generation of more employment opportunities and that will uh, of course will lead to the economic growth of the whole nation so what it will lead to it will lead to creation of new jobs and the scheme is projected to create around 1.7 lakh new jobs in the fisheries sector this includes emphasis on employing 75000 women 
thereby promoting gender inclusivity and economic empowerment then the second is regarding the continued employment opportunities the opportunities that are already there so these will also uh, be sustained and fostered uh, for the socio economic development in rural and the coastal areas so that is the main idea how the job creation will be done the second is facilitated ease of doing business so when the sector is formalized then what will happen it will lead to better access of credit and also will attract more inv investments by the entrepreneurs and different companies that are dependent on these sectors and other uh, companies or the investment mechanisms can also be attracted that will uh, promote the economic growth of the whole sector the last point is increase income and enhance export competitiveness Ex uh, of course uh, right now our rank is number 4 we are fourth rank as far as this uh, fisheries and fish products is concerned the export of this products is concerned so what it will do when we will formalize the whole sector provide it with better access to finance and other benefits what it will lead to it will help us in long term to enhance the growth of this sector and will increase the export competitiveness of the nation and will eventually will increase our rank as far as the global ranking is concerned so this scheme aims to increase income of fisheries and fish farmers by improving productivity value addition and market access we have already seen this and that will lead to the export competitiveness of indian fisheries thereby contributing to foreign exchange earnings so i hope it is clear and we have covered the body part also now let us see the conclusion now before we see the conclusion as i always explain what are the steps that you need to keep in mind while writing the conclusion so the first thing is the conclusion starter which is nothing but your stand stand means whether you agree or you disagree the second is why why means why you have taken this stand why with respect to the point 1 which is the starter which is just an extended point of this but it gives a reasoning regarding why you have taken that that stand why do you think so the third is the way forward which is nothing but the solution if you will divide your conclusion like this you will never face any problem for writing conclusion you can write any type of conclusion with this approach and we are going to see that how we can use uh, such type of approach for this answer so if you see the conclusion let me erase the ink so if we see the conclusion then pradhan mantri kisan samriddhi sahay yojana emerges as a pivotal initiative for bolstering india's blue economy so bolstering means nothing but avoid this complicated term if you want you can it means fostering to promoting india's blue economy you can use easier words also so pradhan mantri matsya kisan samriddhi sahay yojana emerges as a pivotal initiative so what our stand is what was the first step to take a stand to take an agreement or disagreement with respect to the question so what our agreement or uh, the stand regarding the question is that this scheme is a is of pivotal importance or a pivotal initiative for promoting india's blue economy we agree with this with that thing and that is our stand we have written now why do we think so let us see which is our second step this scheme by prioritizing the formalization of the fishery sector facilitating access to institutional finance for msmes and incentivizes the adoption of the aquaculture insurance lays a robust foundation for sustainable growth so why do we think it is a pivotal initiative because firstly it is formalizing the sector then access to institutional finance and in incentivizes the aquaculture insurance so that makes it a robust scheme a robust foundation for sustainable growth so we have covered our two points what was the third point the way forward the solution so the government should strategically leverage the scheme to actively promote and advance the blue economy through targeted policies investments and collaborations aimed at enhancing sustainable fisheries management that promote value addition along the entire seafood value chain so i hope this is clear that what is our way forward the way forward is to by promoting the blue economy through targeted policies number 1 investments number 2 and collaborations number 3 to enhance the sustainable fisheries management so this is our way forward that's how you can very effectively design your conclusion 
in a structured manner and i hope this approach is clear to you and i want you to practice this approach of writing conclusion for different answers especially by seeing the by going through the previous year questions and it will definitely ha uh, help you to master the trick of writing good conclusions now that is it for today and this is our expected question that uh, whose answer you have to write in the comment box and remember that it will be evaluated within 48 hours of posting this video which is you have to submit it before Wednesday 5 p.m. I hope this is clear and thank you so much and I hope uh, this uh, session was useful for you and all the best.